Greetings Internet! It's Alex from Barefaced again. I'm wearing sunglasses because I came in wearing my prescription sunglasses and forgot to bring my other ones with me. So yay! I look like a pretend rock star. And I've got a Czech shirt or a plaid shirt as Watt himself would call it. And I'm armed with a Watt plower which is a whole load of short scale fun. So we've got a 13 inch scale, standard tuning, four string, um, got a soap bar, sort of humbucker by the bridge, more clarity than you expect from a Gibson one, but it's got that sort of weight. P pick up here, precision with rails, so you can bend strings without them dropping out, and a reverse P half as well. So it does that, that, or that. Passive electronics. We're running through the same amp, everything's set flat, except we've had to run through the preamp stage. This is a Jens Ben shuttle, so it's fairly clean and honest, um, and we're not overdriving anything. And again, demoing these three cabs. So 210S. Super compact, that's got a 12 in, and Big Baby 2, that's also got the same 12 in a larger cab, tuned lower, crossover, and a very fancy high frequency device.
That was the Watt Plower, various pickup settings, I'll put them in the subtitly titly thingies, you know, that appear magically on there. Um, through three different cabs, Big Baby 2 had its high frequency control all the way up, that's the one you can see down there. Let me point the camera down. There we go. Big Baby 2, that's the one you can see there, high frequency control all the way up. 210S. Switchable impedance, 4 or 12 ohms, switch to 12 ohms for the purpose of this, because they're at 8 and it sort of works out fairly because that's quite high efficiency. They're both, they're all high efficiency cabs, but the 210 is really high efficiency. Um, super compact, same 12 as in that, it's our unique 12XN driver, handles 600 watts all day long. Uh, the drivers in the 210S, that's the 10CR, which is, um, you kind of got a talking hand, not a talking person. The 10s in the... Um, the 210S, that's the 10CR, that is another unique bare-faced driver. Lots and lots of output, lots of efficiency, very good dispersion, wide bandwidth, but not chasing accuracy as much as the 12. So it's more coloured, you can hear that sort of warmth and fatness. Uh, it's dirtier in the top, it's not as flat in the mids, but it's got a lovely sound. But the interesting thing, based on the, uh, the first video I did of this, so that was with the Stingray, so I'll put a link to that one in if you want to hear a more modern sound. Oh, by the way, this has also got pretty fresh strings on it. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing is that 
we seem to get an equal number of people saying, I like that cab, or that cab, or that cab. You know, so it is very much a, a case of personal preference. If you're not sure which one you like, and which would suit you, because it's hard to judge based on these recordings, you know, try to do them as well as possible, but you know, we have the limitations of technology and the limitations of what you're listening through, so good headphones please, or big speakers, or something. But regardless of what you're listening through, you're not going to hear a ton of truth in the lows. This is more about the mid-range tone, and to be honest, all bareface cabs can produce prodigious amounts of bottom end for their size. So consequently, you don't really need to worry about the bottom end from a bareface cab. You will be able to get the lows you want. It's just a question of either turning down the base knob if there's too much, then we're turning up the base knob if there aren't enough. They will do a lot of lows. So it's more about the mid-range character, the treble character, um, yeah, and getting the right sort of output and efficiency for your needs. And that is not going to be based on the band you're in, the music you're playing, but it's going to be more about what your likes are playing. Now, obviously, if you're in a jazz band, you know, three-piece that uh, plays coffee shops, you are not going to need to be as loud as in a five-piece metal band where both guitarists are running full stacks. But if you're in the middle ground of blues and rock and indie and alternative and whatever bands, and even pop bands, you know, funk bands, um, some bands are a lot louder than others in the same genre. Some bands are a lot quieter than others in the same genre. Some drummers are a lot louder than other drums. Some drummers are a lot quieter. And even some bassists like to sit in a louder place in the mix, and some bassists like to have a lot more bottom, and some bassists like to use really low power valve amps, so need more cab efficiency, and some bassists want more headroom, and so it's very long. But anyway, if you are wondering about this and wondering what would suit you, just email me. It's easy, and I will work it out, because I've got a lot of experience of doing this. I've had 10 years odd of running barefaced and being a bassist for obviously a lot longer than that, and being an engineer for longer than that, and understanding really how all this stuff goes together. So there we go, and thank you to Reverend for giving me this fantastic bass. I've never been given a bass before, how delightful. Um, thank you for Mike Watt for Out of the Blue choosing to buy a bareface cab and then, you know, hooking us up with Reverend and being so awesome and exchanging lots of fun emails and just being generally an awesome dude with a lot of fun things to talk about with music and gear and everything. So yeah, rock on everyone. Shout out to Mike Watt, the crew at Reverend. And uh, yeah, I'm done for now. More videos to come. Tell me what you want. Oh, uh, like, subscribe, um, you know, that stuff that the YouTubers do. Hey other YouTubers, any of you out there? Oh, actually, on that subject, if you want to demo a bareface cab, to test a bareface cab, anything like that, and you have a reasonable amount of followers, so it's worth our sort of effort and cost and whatever to send a cab to you and such like, um, get in touch, because it's a good way to spread the word, and if you know what you're doing and can play and you know, know how to mic things up, it is quite useful, because everyone's different, and at the moment all the bass demoing is done by me, and not everyone plays bass like me, thankfully. Um, the world would be a very one-dimensional place if we all played the same. So, thank you, goodbye, I shall stop talking now. Where's the stop button? Why won't it stop? Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button.